those and it is feeling like such a beautiful spring day. I just want to be outside. So I've done most of my work today. I mean, I've done some work <laughs> today and it's three o'clock now and I just want to get outside. There are a couple of garden jobs that I want to get done. I want to rearrange some of my tulip pots so that I can see them better when I look out of the window because at the moment they're a little bit hidden. And I actually want to plant my potatoes today because I probably should have done that about two weeks ago and I haven't got around to doing it yet. But I have some new potato bags, as in like potato grow bags, and I think today's a very good day to get it done. <laughs> anyway, let's get outside. We are going to start with a bit of a tidy up. I move some of the little dead looking plants <laughs> to a bit of a sweep around and then I spent about probably over half an hour trying to decide where to put my pots <laughs> of tulips and daffodils. I would absolutely love one of those like plant theatres, I think that's what they're called, um, where they have like, it's basically a, a shelf an outdoor shelf for your pots so they go up in height and look wonderful but those things are so damn expensive one day i will make one but maybe next year i think so anyway here's me and the pots <laughs> And then here we have the main bulb display. And then in this direction, this is what the bulbs are looking like. Those are also ranunculus, but don't know what's gonna happen with those, whether they're gonna flower or not. These are my absolute favorite combination. And this is like, I think the proper like bulbs um, with the frilly centers, the proper daffodils with frilly centers are called replete. And these aren't replete, these are, he got them in Lidl, um, a pack of 10 bulbs for a pound. And I didn't think anything would happen or I, I thought they'd be like pretty ugly. <laughs> but look how beautiful they are, they're so beautiful. And that lilac -y tulip is also from Lidl, another one pound <laughs> bag of bulbs. And yeah, those two together, the frilly daffodil and the lilac -y tulip just look so nice together. Those tall daffodils were also from, from Lidl and I love them. They're so tall, I wasn't expecting them to be that tall. It was kind of nice that they can be like a centerpiece. <laughs> so these pink, oh hello, hello little bug. <laughs> So these pink tulips, um, they're actually called finola, finola, I think that's how you say it, and they start off white, like these are the same. So they start off like this whitey cream colour and then they change to this beautiful pink and they look really peony-ish. <laughs> and I didn't expect them to be so pretty and whoa, they are just so beautiful. These little daffodils are starting to pop out. They are called Cosmopolitan, I think. And I thought they were one flower per stem, but it looks like there's three flowers per stem, which is quite cute. I guess they're kind of similar to these, but paler. I really like the orange center of these though. They're so cute. In these terracotta pots, these two here, they have my prized tulips in. These are, I think it's called Amazing Grace and Copper Image and they are a combo that I got from Farmer Gracie and the most expensive tulips that I bought. <laughs> but they're supposed to be quite like peony-ish. Well, I hope you enjoyed that early April tulip tour. <laughs> well, there's still so many more tulips to come, so. I will be showing those at the end of this video, but now we are on to potato planting. 
I got these pale grey kind of I think they are actually potato bags because they've got like a door in them <laughs> um, and yes I know they're not going to stay that nice and clean and tidy for long I know they will grow like probably green from algae um, pretty soon <laughs> but the thing is with my patio it is an absolute sun trap and I've had dark coloured pots in the past and they have just heated up so quickly so yeah, that's why I went with a pale coloured bag. Um, here I am showing you my potatoes. <laughs> I am growing two different varieties this year. Um, this is my first time growing potatoes. So if I'm doing anything wrong, then whatever, I'll learn from my mistakes. Anyway, these potatoes have been chitting away <laughs> on my on a windowsill for the past few weeks and now they are ready to plant. I think I'm doing four Charlotte potatoes per bag. That might be too many, it might be okay. I don't know, we will see. And then I am doing three Maris Piper potatoes per bag. Um, I just filled the bottom of the bags with a bit of spent compost and fertiliser, I think it's seaweed fertiliser, and then I am adding new compost on top, about um, a third of the bag is filled and then when the leaves appear at the top I will then cover with more compost. Um, I know you can just fill the bag straight up, like up to the top and not worry about um, What's it called? Hill hilling them up. Is that the official potato term? Not sure. Uh, but yeah, this is my first year growing potatoes, so I'm just gonna add more compost as and when the leaves appear. Hello, today is the 12th of April and I've been away for the past week and I didn't have time to sow all my seeds before going. So I'm feeling so behind at the moment. So if you hadn't watched my previous video, that's when I sewed all my cosmos, herbs, I think I did marigolds, calendula, some dahlias, and some asters, and that's it. <laughs> and prior to that I had sewn my chilies and peppers, and I have got tons of things I want to grow and sew this year. And I'm just looking at my seed box now and it's overflowing. I accidentally bought some more seeds. <laughs> I wasn't going to, I shouldn't have, but I have got more seeds. So I've got like double the amount to sow now. And yeah, I feel like time is running out and I haven't stuck to my plan at all. So I'm gonna go through the seeds now, show you what I'm gonna sow and we are just gonna sow as much as possible this evening. <laughs> Firstly, dwarf broad beans. I also got a load more flower seeds. I wanted some like cascading types of flowers and I know you can buy um, lobelia and petunias in the garden centre and they're not too expensive, but I'm gonna try them from seed. I've also got alisum because I think it's really pretty and smells really nice. <laughs> then we've got some larkspur. I think you have to sow these directly. Maybe I will leave these for today. And I've also got some super tall nasturtiums. I think these grow like two meters, oh, 180, just under. But yeah, I think these will look really nice um, with the beans or the pumpkins over those archways that I'm planning to put up soon. I also took these out of my seed box last week and didn't get around to it. So I wanted to sow some more like medicinal kind of herbs, edible flower things. I was successful in germinating the St. John's wort last year, but um, I went away and the little pots that they were in dried out and they died and it was very sad because these take about a month to germinate. Oh, one to three months to germinate. And I was really disappointed in myself for letting those die. So I'm gonna try again. I also grew holy basil last year, but it literally got like this tall and did nothing else. So maybe 
If I have enough pots and compost, I will try these again. I was gonna grow some more lemon balm, but the pot that I thought was dead out in the garden is actually alive, so I'm not gonna sow those anymore. I've already got some in the garden. And then also got this bee balm. I think it grows quite tall actually, so 90 centimeters tall. We'll see, I might sow this today as well. Tomatoes, I am going to sow these today. So I've got Constoluto Fiorentino, <laughs> is that how you say it? I think it's a beef steak that is good for the British climate. I've got a dry cork or a dry gorg, which is a Welsh tomato. It literally means red dragon. I think this is more of like a salad type tomato, so we'll see. I'll sow a couple of those. These I just picked up because they looked interesting. <laughs> They're like tiny little currant tomatoes. Crimson plum, I think I couldn't find the variety that I grew last year of plum tomato and they did really well. I got so, so many plum tomatoes. So I'm hoping this um, tomato variety is as good as the one I grew last year. And then finally we've got sun gold and apero, <laughs> which are both little cherry tomatoes, which sound really nice. I absolutely love cherry tomatoes, so I'm looking forward to these. We've got speedy French beans and sugar snap peas. These I wanted to sow last month or during the last sewing session and I ran out of compost, so these are a priority today. <laughs> Is it too early for courgettes? I don't know, because technically they have a month indoors now. I think I'll do courgettes today. <laughs> I've got two types of courgette, Romanesco, which I really, really liked, and then the standard kind of dark green courgette. And what I found last year was that they were actually being like cross-pollinated or something, and they all ended up looking the same, um, which was quite funny. But anyway, I love this courgette when it's not <laughs> cross-pollinated. <laughs> I've also got some Dilby Little Pumpkins and an Uchiki Kuri. Uchiki? Is that how you say it? This is my favourite squash and I actually managed to grow one successfully last year, which was fab. These cucumbers were my absolute favourite thing last year. They were quite small, they were like literally this big, um, but they tasted so good and I'm so excited for these this year. <laughs> On to lettuces, I'm really not sure what to sow. I might just do like the salad bowl, loose leaf, some spinach, maybe these two. We'll see. We'll see how much like growing space I actually have. I think I'm on to flowers now, but I have had zero luck with germinating sweet peas this year and I have no idea why because last year I had excellent sweet peas. I had so, so many and they were so big and strong. And yeah, all of my seeds have like rotted before germinating and I don't know why. It must be my compost because I don't know. Don't know what else is going wrong. But anyway, I was really, really excited for these ones. They're called Turquoise Lagoon. And yeah, I think I've only got like two seeds left because just none of them are germinated. So I'm just gonna chuck all these seeds in today and hopefully I get like at least one sweet pea. <laughs> I'm gonna do a load of nasturtiums. Uh, these are my favourite, they're called Summer Carousel. They were so, so pretty last year. Purple Emperor is also my <laughs> favourite. <laughs> Cherry Rose Jewel was also my favourite. Do you know what? Nasturtiums are my favourite. So yes, let's get some nasturtiums in today. Lastly, I have some Zinnia, which I think I might leave for today because I know they really like warm weather um so i might leave it a couple more weeks and i got given some seeds <laughs> so we've got sunflowers in here and the giant sunflowers um i'm just gonna go crazy with sunflowers this year because last year i only sowed like three and i really regretted it because they were just so cool i just love sunflowers so and then there's some cute little violas in here too now we've got to work out how many seed trays and pots I'm going to need because this is a lot. <laughs> So I've got these tiny little coir pellets 
that expands in water. Frida wants to see. <laughs> and I bought the wrong size last year, but I'm just gonna use the mat. I'm gonna sew the lattice in them, I think. Otherwise, I wouldn't use them. I don't think, I think they're too small for anything else. And it will be good to germinate the lettuce inside and then get it outside as soon as possible. You know how it goes. The first step of sewing anything is to make your labels. You don't want to mix things up. Well, you can mix things up if you want, but per personally, I prefer to know what's, <laughs> what's growing and what's not. Anyway, I'm sewing my beans in here, broad beans and speedy beans and then here I'm sewing my peas, two peas per pot and finally in these trays I'm doing the cucumbers and the tomatoes. I think I sewed about three or four tomato seeds as in three of each variety because it is very easy to get carried away with tomato plants. I mean, sowing <laughs> tomato seedlings. You can end up with way too many and you don't really want that. You don't wanna be looking after about 20 tomato plants. <laughs> Some of these seeds were so tiny. They were so, so small, I could barely see them. But yeah, I will give you a little seedling update towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> So this is actually really interesting but these tulips actually quite a few of the tulips are actually growing little ones out of the side there's a couple in here um but yeah they've got little little baby ones sprouting out so here so this is actually a baby one that's a baby one and that's a baby one there because i only planted 10 bulbs and they've already kind of like been multiplying I was actually going to dig out these pansies and the crocus, they've stopped now so I was going to dig out the crocus bulbs and put them in the border but the pansies have just like really woken up the last week or so because those ones are really pretty, that one right there is really pretty too but they're just getting eaten by the slug straight away um, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep them in for um, a bit longer I think. Well, I could dig them out and put them somewhere else, but yeah, they're so pretty. I don't know what happened. They would just look like they were dying and then suddenly they're like pretty again. <laughs> look how perfect that one is. So nice. These tulips are going over now. <gasps> so sad. Look what I just noticed. We've got a clematis flower already, or clematis, clematis, however you say it crazy So I want to get outside and do some garden jobs. I've got three jobs that I want to do this afternoon. The main one is pot up my dahlia tubers. Secondly, I need to pot up some herbs which have grown again. I thought they were all dead, but <laughs> no, I think they're alive. So I'm going to pot those up as well. And the third job is kind of a big thing to do. I'm going to extend my flower border. I've already begun doing something whether it's a good idea I don't know but I kind of want that space to grow my broad beans and well if they germinate because I will show you like a little seedling update in a minute but um yeah there's no sign of life from the broad beans just yet so maybe I'm just getting a bit too excited but if my broad beans don't grow I'm sure I can find a load of flowers to fill that extra area with but anyway Firstly, I want to show you the dahlia varieties that I'm growing this year from Farmer Gracie. 
And I basically rebought the same varieties as last year and a couple of other cute ones. So in my box, I've got two Cafe Ole, Cafe Ole, yeah, Royal, Royal, Cafe Ole Royal. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So I've got two this year. One is actually gonna be for my mum, but I'm gonna start them off for her. And this was just amazing last year. Oh, so pretty. Then I've got two, two little like smaller dahlias with like single flower, single flower heads. As in they don't have like loads of petals. They've just got single petals around them. This one is heart, heart tenas, heart tenas. How do you say that? But this still will grow a metre tall, so that's quite big. Then I have Teesbrook Audrey, which is another <laughs> single petal head one, and also grows a metre tall. And then lastly, I rebought the Penhill Dark Monarch. Then. I actually, in here, <laughs> I actually saved some of the tubers that I grew, uh, the dahlias from seed. So when you plant the seed, it will form a little tuber and you can dig that up instead of sowing the seed again the next year. Um, I haven't looked in here yet, so I wonder if they're still alive. <laughs> oh, it's like growing already. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this one <laughs> is a little baby one. This one's pink. This one was my favorite last year, but don't tell the rest. <laughs> then I've got, let's see. Oh my gosh, they've all started growing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorry. This one is labeled yellow. I have no idea what the seed variety was last year. Um, I might still have a packet so I can call them something other than pink and yellow. And then this one, white. They're like really ugly looking things, aren't they? And then finally, and it's already sprouted some more. This one is Genoa. I made a label out of cat food packet, so. <laughs> Genoa. This is the pom pom variety and we shall pot those up and I'm sure those sprouts will find their way the right way up soon. So to pot up my dahlia tubers, I am using the biggest pots that I could find that would um, accommodate these ugly looking tubers and I'm using just some peat free compost with lots of perlite in. Um, the thing with dahlias is they don't like, well, you can easily kill them <laughs> by leave, putting them in like too wet of a potting mix or over watering them because they are very slow to grow so when you pot your dahlias up don't over water them water them once and then leave them do their thing because they yeah they, they are very slow so here i am <laughs> watering my tubers um i just did one soaking like this and i'm not watering them again for well until the pots like start to really dry out the worst thing you can do is see that they're not growing and then give them more water because they probably will drown and rot and you don't want that <laughs> anyway i'm putting my freshly potted up tubers into my little greenhouse and then i decided to get rid of this lavender it has not done well Lavender should grow really well in my garden, but it's just it just hasn't worked. So one of the pieces of lavender that I pulled out did look like it was growing back. So I'm saving that piece and putting it in a different pot. Uh, but I'm using this big terracotta pot for my lupin. And this lupin has been through it, I tell you that now. Last year I bought it as a little 
a little lupin and it had like one main stalk i think it was going to flower and a slug or snail came along and bit through the main stalk and i was so upset about it so this year i'm determined to look after <laughs> this poor little lupin and i really really hope it flowers this year it's been through a lot <laughs> I decided to give my strawberries a little bit more compost. I will be putting some strolch or straw, I think it's called strolch, um, around them soon. Um, so when the strawberries start to form, they won't get uh, start to rot uh, if they're laying on the compost and it will also deter slugs. And then we are moving on to extending my border. So I have loads of these stones and rocks that were used to build a back wall but the back wall has been knocked down and my garden is just full of these stones so I decided to put them to use and oh this is really painful to watch but I had to move all the, <laughs> the stones the chippings whatever they're called and I don't have a shovel so I just used a fork to like kind of rake them rake them up uh, it took ages <laughs> I did get a little trowel out and then do a little bit more by hand trowel and then once I'd moved all these stones I peeled back the landscaping fabric and um, made some kind of little wall with the big stones and honestly I was so tired after this. Um, I laid down a layer of cardboard and then some spent compost on top of the cardboard and I, when it comes to planting I will fill this area with fresh compost and hopefully it will be a nice little flower border. So by here is my main seedling area and it's not ideal but uh, <laughs> it's the only space that I really have because I don't have windowsills in this house. Um, we've got bay windows, so like the ledge is like that thick, which isn't ideal. And it's not great because I have two cats as well and they like to play with leaves or just rip them off, to be honest. So anyway, I've got my peppers here. These peppers really, really need potting on because uh, that one's not too bad but most of them have roots poking out so they definitely need bigger pots I don't know if I've talked about my pepper varieties but I have eight different peppers here so I think I've got sweet peppers um, snack peppers which are like really small and cute and they did amazingly last year I've got paprika Sugar Rush Peach, Pepperdew, Cayenne Serrano, and what else do I have? Oh, jalapenos, jalapenos, whatever you call them. So that's eight different varieties here, the rest. <laughs> um, below here, I have my basil plants. I'm not impressed with this compost, so I'm really worried. I pricked all of these little seedlings out and put them into their own modules and I was really worried that they were gonna die but since they've been pricked out their like their main leaves have gone really big so I think they're gonna be okay. I also have two sage plants there and six little chamomiles. So yeah those are my basils and then at the bottom here I have snapdragons. Uh, these are standard snapdragons, these are apple blossom, and here I only had one uh, dwarf snapdragon germinate, which is a little bit sad. But these also need to be pricked out and put into their own uh, little modules. Anyway, onto this trolley, we have the peppers at the top. I've got the oregano and thyme in here, which also need pricking out, but look how like... Some of these are like super leggy and I don't know if they're gonna survive. <laughs> Hopefully they do. I have one little dill plant there and some coriander which need to go in a bigger pot. Down below here I have a couple of nasturtiums finally germinating and these were sunflowers. That is a Mrs. Mars. I moved the... <laughs> this is so awkward to show you. The other... Uh, the larger sunflowers there 
Um, but I'm actually going to take all my seedlings outside today because it's a really nice day. They need some air and light. Anyway, moving on to this side, I have Speedy Beans. They have done absolutely nothing. I'm worried that <laughs> they're just not going to germinate again. Maybe I need different seeds, I'm not too sure. Then I have Broad Beans, which also have not done anything. I think under here, that one might be doing something, I'm not too sure. Anyway, the lettuce <laughs> seedlings are just like balancing on here, getting some light from the lamp for the time being. Um, all three courgettes have germinated. This, those two are Romanesco, that is the normal, normal one. I've got peas, most of them germinated, but two pots haven't, which is not great so maybe I'll just re-sow those and I think the peas are just going to go straight out into the greenhouse now they've germinated I don't really have space here for them and this is alisum petunia no lobelia and petunia again I need to prick these out when they're a little bit bigger uh, but I want to get a different sized module tray for them smaller size and in here, spinach didn't germinate, and that's another lettuce. One has germinated so far, so yeah, it's uh, a little chaotic here, but we are coping. So on the heat mat, I had the tomatoes. The heat mat is off now, and I've got them under this lamp. Um, they do need pricking out soon, but some of them are still a little bit too small. So we have... One, two, three, four. We've had five cucumbers germinate. That one is doing something. Hopefully it will <laughs> sprout some leaves pretty soon. Um, only one Fiorentino, the beefsteak variety, has germinated, which is a little bit sad. Dry core, three, all three seeds germinated. Again, with the, uh, the red currant variety for some reason these two are really <laughs> struggling to get the leaves out of the seed coat uh, same with these guys what's this plum variety those two have those two seem to be stuck in their seed coats too no aperos apero yeah that's how you say it no aperos germinated which is a little bit worrying because i was really excited for those so i'm gonna have to re-sow those and then all four of the sun gold germinated and looking good so i'm gonna leave them here for a couple more days maybe another week um when they're big enough i will break them out and put them into their own modules or pots but for now i think they're okay under this lamp it's quite windy today so i do apologize but out in the greenhouse that is one big gust of wind um my cosmos these are the white ones nine germinated out of the ten seeds i think seven hang on let me count eight <laughs> eight no yeah eight pink ones germinated out of the ten seeds here are my snapdragons from autumn there's not many left i think i think this one's i think that one's a little bit dead as well <laughs> but luckily i have loads more baby seedlings indoors down here we have my calendula um i think nine out of ten germinated the dahlias only five germinated i might pass those some more of those french marigolds seven out of ten and these are the asters i think only four are <laughs> doing okay so i will be sewing more of those soon as well good morning today is sunday the 23rd of april and it's about time that i pot on my poor little chili babies <laughs> so i've got 26 chilies and peppers sweet peppers and chilies um to pot into bigger pots they're currently in these quite small little pots and i think they're struggling they're getting a little bit leggy as well so yeah they need to go into bigger pots i've got eight different varieties and i don't think i'll be keeping all 26 plants <laughs> i will be giving some away so yeah i am gonna put a youtube video on in the background and just get potting on i think 
I'm just using Westland peat free multi-purpose compost and I'm adding some perlite in Um, yeah my main goal for this year is to grow a year's worth of pepper and chilies I absolutely love chilies I think I mentioned this in my last um, gardening gardening video but yeah I would love to make uh, like hot sauce definitely paprika powder chili powder chili flakes maybe I could do well last year I did um pickled chilies I love those um what else can I do with chilies give some away <laughs> to my friends um yeah and then with the sweet peppers and snack peppers I would like to freeze a load of them and then eat them throughout the year so I think like peppers are my main focus this year and I think I'm gonna have a garden full of peppers and I hope I get a load of peppers <laughs> to harvest as well I bought some more little seed trays, module trays, propagators, <laughs> whatever they're called. Um, I got these on Amazon because there was nothing like this left in Wolco. I usually get all my garden stuff from Wolco. But anyway, um, I got these little ones because I think they will actually fit on my windowsill upstairs. And they're quite good because the insert kind of hovers above the actual tray so there's a bit of a gap for drainage or bottom watering which is good and they come with little lids as well so what i'm gonna do is prick out and put on my little snapdragons and my thyme and oregano and then hopefully these will all fit <laughs> on my windowsill upstairs because i have no space by my back door anymore okay i am going to sew my pumpkins, the curry squash, runner beans, zinnia, sunflower, nasturtiums, and I'm gonna try my dwarf beans again since nothing happened last time. So, <laughs> you can't see, but I soaked the dwarf beans and the pumpkins in here. They've been in here for about half an hour. So hopefully that will speed up the germination process because like I said, the dwarf beans just I haven't done anything yet, so I'm going to sew four dwarf beans. Ah! I'm going to sew four dwarf beans per module in this big tray. So 24 beans <laughs> in total, and hopefully something germinates. I'm going to sew two pumpkins per pot, and then two curry squash. So hopefully I will get something to germinate then one bean per pot, then then one flower seed per module. Right, let's get on with it. These speedy dwarf beans are anything but speedy. I haven't managed to germinate a single one still. Um, and my runner beans are no better, so I think I'm gonna have to buy some more seed. It must be my seed that's wrong, because I've tried three different composts now and nothing has worked i don't know what i'm doing wrong here are the flower propagators and i'm so happy they fit perfectly on my windowsill with the blind down as well so that's great <laughs> i love these little propagators they are actually like super strong and sturdy so i think they were worth the price and yeah Just like to say a big thank you for watching if you made it to the end thank you <laughs> congratulations well done <laughs> i appreciate you so much uh please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos i would love to make a garden video every week um let me know if you enjoy this and i shall do that anyway i am going to leave you now with some nice footage of my tulips and daffodils. Thank you again for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!